Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I mentioned earlier, each year on the second Sunday in Advent, we come to John the Baptist, the voice that is crying out in the wilderness, the wilderness of Judea, the desolation of the desert. These are places where prophets are often found, and they're also places of encounter with God, of testing, of refining, places where God's people are reformed, made to conform to the image of Christ. And yes, even Israel, as they wandered in the desert before the incarnation, were themselves being conformed to the image of Christ, purified, refined, reformed by God. And I think that in the Imperial Valley, it's kind of nice that we have this desert around us because it might help to heighten the experience that this is a place where God is active. At this church, in these words, in this supper of his body and blood, God is truly present, truly active. Perhaps we are then well suited to hear the words of John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, what is this kingdom of heaven? Is it a physical kingdom, a, a castle on a hill from whence God commands and judges? No. But if not a physical kingdom, then, then a spiritual one. The Holy Spirit dwelling within our hearts. That is the kingdom of God, right? No. At least not entirely. Well, then what is the kingdom? It is equally right to translate the Greek, the kingdom of heaven, as the reign of heaven. For the kingdom is the place where someone's authority reigns. And in this case, it is the authority of God reigning. And that is the kingdom. And so to understand the fullness of that reality, we understand that the kingdom or the reign of heaven is nothing less than God's own divine action taking place here and now in history, actually being a part of our life, being a part of the history of the world. Factual, actual, and true. And the kingdom of heaven that draws near is nothing less and no one else than Christ Jesus. God made flesh. And so in this sense, it is a, a physical kingdom. For God truly is dwelling. God himself is here in his person. And it is also a spiritual kingdom. Because God gives you his spirit. You see, John's whole ministry was a call to repentance. And how we react to this call is illustrative of, of who we might see as ourselves in this, in this retelling. You see, there were two groups coming out to see John the Baptist. Sinners and vipers. Now the sinners were those who recognized their sin, who were remorseful of their sin, and they were baptized by John while confessing their sins. It's not a baptism like Christian baptism, though there are many connections. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, 
a preparation. It looked forward to the Messiah, and it prepared the people for the end times, that end time event of Christ. See, Christian baptism actually seals the believer for salvation at that final end time, the baptism that Christ pours out. For he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so Christian baptism joins you into the death of Christ, into the resurrection of Christ, and joins you to the last day, the day of Christ. But the other group, this, this brood of vipers, Matthew tells us specifically this was many of the Pharisee and Sadducee. Now, strangely enough, these two groups didn't usually get along. They were fundamentally opposed to each other in many ways. The Pharisees, the Pharisaic movement, was primarily a, a lay movement of the common people. And it was very popular amongst them. It was chiefly concerned with the interpretation and application of Scripture. And they had developed, in addition to the written Torah, an oral Torah, additional deeds, commands, works that one should do. For to them, being in God's favor meant a total separation from the world of the Gentiles, from their practices, their customs, their culture. A return to strict observance of Mosaic law. Now, the Sadducees, on the other hand, were a small portion of the aristocracy. And they didn't enjoy the kind of support that the Pharisees had. And while they did adhere to Mosaic law, they rejected the traditions of the scribes and Pharisees. They rejected the oral Torah. But more than this, and most unique perhaps, is that they denied the resurrection of the dead. And they denied any life in the hereafter. And that's actually how I always remember them. Because if you had no hope of a life after death, that would make you very sad, you see. And that's how I remember the Sadducees. But more generally, these two groups, these two strange bedfellows, if you will, were coming out, and they wanted to be baptized, not because they recognized their sin, not because they believed, but because it was the thing to do. It was in vogue. Everyone else was coming out to be baptized by John, and how would it look if everyone in your neighborhood went to see John the Baptist except you? Well, John knows they're not repentant, and he challenges them before they can even say a word. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And do not suppose to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. The word stones was often also a euphemism for Gentiles. John was attacking their confidence, their presupposition of salvation apart from Christ, apart from repentance, apart from faith. They believed themselves to be saved because of their blood, because of their lineage. And John says to them, no, even these Gentiles who have no blood relation to Abraham, they are as much children of God, for God has chosen them. See, the true Israel is not of blood. The true Israel is of faith. Faith in the Messiah, in the Christ, in Jesus, the God made flesh. For as we read in Galatians, 
the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. And so the good question for us to ponder on this second Sunday of Advent is who are you, a sinner or a viper? Do you presuppose that you are saved from the wrath to come because you're a card-carrying member of the LCMS? Do you suppose that you are saved from the coming wrath because you've been a member of this congregation for decades. Or even that your parents and your grandparents were founders of this congregation. Are you in the clear because of that? Or do you presuppose that you are saved from the coming wrath because you try to live a good life? You try to be moral and ethical, that you're a good, upright person, better than most, or well, at the very least, no worse than anyone else. If you've built your salvation on presuppositions, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. But for you who fear his name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Malachi in the Old Testament, looking forward to Christ. Christ who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. For the unrepentant and those who refuse to recognize their sin, the fire is the unquenchable and eternal wrath of God. But for those who repent, for those who believe in Christ as their Savior, God's purifying fire removes all filth, all dirt, purifies from the stain of original sin, the corruption of the old Adam, much as a blacksmith makes pure gold in the heat of his fiery furnace. For the blood of Christ has made you clean and now bear the fruit in keeping with repentance. And that is indeed the life of the Christian. It is a life of repentance, a continuous confession of sins and a perpetual faith in Christ as Savior and Lord. Redeemed by Him, in a life of baptism, a life of confession and repentance. Let your voice sound out then and cry to the herald, sound the note of judgment, warning us of right and wrong, turning us from sin and sadness till once more we sing the song. O oh, herald, sound that note of gladness and tell the news that Christ is here. Make a pathway through the desert for the one who brings God near. And herald, sound the note of pardon. Those repenting are forgiven. God receives his wayward children and to them new life is given. O oh, herald, sound the note of triumph. Christ has come to share our life and bringing God's own love and power. He's granting victory in our strife. Sound the trumpet and tell the message, Christ the Savior King is coming. Amen. We now gather together the, the fruits of our hands and we make a good confession of our lips, lips that confess his name, but doing good and distributing 
forget not, for with such sacrifices God himself is well pleased. 